Tony Flexen here for Seconds Out with Lewis Ritson. You're challenging, obviously, for the European lightweight title in October. But first, you've got warm-up fight on Saturday on the Amir Khan Bill at Arena Birmingham. How do you approach a fight like this that comes kind of halfway through what would normally be a training camp? No, well, I thought we're just they using it as a training camp. We're using it as like a spa, really. And we know it's going to be a hard test on Saturday, but we're just involved it with the training. And it would just be like we're going to spar with a top class, top class opponent, but over eight rounds. So just really just involved in it. With five weeks to go to the Patera fight, which is obviously going to be the biggest fight of your pro career, is there any concern that you might pick up a nick or an injury? We, we expect you to be dominant on Saturday night, don't get me wrong, but, you know, accidental head clashes, things like that. Yeah, well, we had a few opponents lined up and they've kept getting changed. And obviously, Eddie Hearns gave us this one and we got a phone call. Oh, I'm a bit wary. This kid comes to fight. And we think, well, what are you matching with him for then? <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, that just comes, comes over the game, doesn't it? And we've got to just make sure that we don't get any head clashes and cuts and... It's easier said than done, but... Well, your style doesn't exactly lend itself to stepping off and moving so much, does it? At least in recent times. No, well, it's still like that now, isn't it? So, <laughs> it's, you know, we're coming to fight in this. We've seen a little bit of this kid and he does too, so hopefully the heads don't go in and just the punches get thrown. <laughs> What's your own take on the run you've been on recently? I think everyone's been dazzled by it. I think we always knew you had talent, but to be blasting guys out, walking through guys, and, and good guys, experienced, accomplished fighters in the way you have has just took you to a whole other level as an attraction. Has it taken you by surprise? Yeah, it has. You know, the fights that we've had, we've expected long, long, hard fights, and that's what we've trained for, and they've just they've ended fast, you know, and, you know, even we don't know how why that is, but, you know, obviously doing something right in the training, we're just going to keep the train going, and hopefully more of the same on October the 13th. Does it worry you in a way? Because I was speaking to another fighter recently who's a similar level to you at the moment, and they were saying it worries them when their fans, well, not worries them, but annoys them when their fans go on Twitter and places like that and say, yeah, he's the best thing going, he's ready for, insert name here, you know, the experienced world lightweight champions out there. Yeah. You're being built up gradually, but does it bother you when people have got these expectations of you now that you're ready to step in with pound for pound fighters? I had a few people on Twitter, Davies, Lomachenko, a lot of them thinking, yeah. what, 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 what fight are you watching? You know, they'll kill us now, but no, eh. Uh, you know, you, if we keep winning, we'll keep winning, but obviously they're long, long fights off, but it's, you know, the, it's like fans that do that, don't they? They want to big their fighters up and put them against them, and hopefully Eddie hasn't got his line up with any of them soon, but, you know, you never know one day in the future it could happen. Fighter I was mentioning there was actually Josh Kelly, who's someone you know quite well, and he was saying he gets the same thing on Twitter, with like Errol Spence and people like that. How important has it been for you two to come through at the same time and kind of rebuild boxing as a force in the North East? Yeah, no, massively because at the time there hasn't really been much going on in the North East for the last few years. And obviously Josh has turned pro and hit from the Olympics and he's done well. And I'm going on a recent, recent run and I'm doing well. So if we keep it going, then hopefully there's big nights still to come for the North East. And, you know, like the North East has been a bit under the radar for years now. We've got quite a few good pros down there and hopefully this will be the time to show up with the big shows coming. It's a long way from when they used to have shows in the North East at like Seaford Centre and places like that. You, you're filling big arenas now, you and, and Josh, obviously. But it looks now like you can fill them separately as well. Josh obviously isn't going to be on the October bill. He'll have his own bill later in the year. So you're a force in your own right now as a draw. You must be one of the biggest boxing attractions in Britain right now. Well, yeah, well, I don't like to think like that, but it seems like, like we are. And, you know, last time I think me and Josh had to be on that show to, to sell it. And this time now, you see now we're both big enough names to probably sell it ourselves. And that's good for North East Boxing. And like, it's good, good for the lads on the other cards as well. But, you know, it's been a lot of hard work and we've got to keep that going. Do you ever worry that you're due a boring one, like a real 12 round bore fest with a difficult, awkward guy? But Patera seems that way, doesn't it? So he seems like the type of lad that, that runs about for 12 rounds. And so hopefully it's not a boring fight. But, you know, if it is going to be an opponent, he's the sort of one that. Could be that banana skin where he will be a bit boring, where he will run away because he's quite good on the back foot, but you know, he doesn't seem too fussed and he seems like he's going to come to fight, so hopefully that's what he'll do. Do you feel a bit of pressure in that sense that fans have become you know, familiar with how you fight, you're always exciting, you're always on the front foot, that at some point you're going to have to switch up and you're going to have to go on your toes and maybe the fans won't love that? Yeah, well, when you set up the levels, fighters can nullify certain things, can't they? So, like, I'm a come forward fighter, but there's going to be a time where there's a fighter in front of us who might be stronger than me, might be better than me on the front foot, and it's like you see, you'll have to change my tactics, and I'll have to go on the back foot, and people might go, oh, well, we're not used to that, we're, we're don't. but it's something we're going to have to come to when it comes to it, but at the minute, coming forward and fighting seems to be working, and that's what we'll keep doing. You fight incredibly regularly for a fighter at your level, a lot of them only fight three, maybe four times a year at the most, you fight loads in comparison. How do you balance that in the training camps with having quite a young family at home? Well, very hard, if you ask me, well, last year was a very boring family life, but... You know, when I was with Billy, nine fights in the first year, uh, had a few injuries the second year, so it's been slowed down. But since we've been on match room, they've been 
busy and obviously we've had a couple of contracts off them now and they're going to keep us busy and they're going to keep the fights rolling. And I'm always in the gym anyway, so that's, that's the way I, I like it. Uh, my girlfriend doesn't like it because she gets no family time, but you know, it's, she, has she has to look after the kids, yeah, so that's, well, that's what comes with it. And you know, at the end, of it, the end of the day, the boxing, when the boxing's all finished, we could be turn back and say, well, look, it was all worth it, we've got this, we've got that, and she'll be happy. Brilliant. Well, we wish you the very best on Saturday and then further on on October the 13th as well. No, thank you. Good speaking to you, Danny.